You know it, you love it, it's the Midtown Special. Hey there, today I have a comic book pressing video. Uh, I have a series of clips to share with you, and um, this is all really uh, related to something that I call the Midtown Special. Now, I think technically it's just Corner Crunch, and unfortunately it happens when there is damage to typically either the bottom left, if you're holding the comic book, right side up, it's the bottom left corner, or the top left corner, the, either corner along the spine, is typically where it, and it looks like the book was just dropped, like it just, bang, fell right on the corner, and you can start to see or imagine the page rippling effect that happens where that corner just gets mashed. So it's not necessarily like a bend or a fold, it's it's a, a literal crunching of the corner um, and you'll see lots of close-ups of it and examples of this um, in these clips. But I've always wanted to see if I could correct this, or, or is it even something that can be corrected? And so I wanted to conduct an experiment just to kind of see what steps do I need to take in order to correct the crunch, to, or reverse the crunch. Um, because in the end, it is just a bunch of creases and folds just in a very particular uh, series and direction on the book. Um, however, it's not just something that you can just lay in a press and press out. It does require um, a specific technique, a couple of different tools, and then you'll kind of see in the end how the book turned out, and then maybe help me decide, was it worth it? Um, it as, part of, as I go through this comic book pressing journey, I'm always trying to basically make two decisions. Um, and the first one is, can a book be pressed? And then the second part is, should a book be pressed? And even if you're answering yes to the first question, I'm saying no to the second question more often than not. And it really has to do with your time and whether or not a particular book is valuable enough, is worth the effort, but through this process, another thing that I've thought about is if you're improving a book from one grade to the next, and it's still a low grade or a mid grade, did it matter? Did it, did it really matter? And I know if we're talking about grails and keys from golden or silver age, I get it. If you can go from a 3.0 to even a 3.5, you're potentially talking about thousands of dollars. I understand that. But um, in this video, I'm working on that book right behind me. And that's a modern book. You know, like, is it is it really worth the trouble? If that if you see the impact damage on a book like that, do you just throw up your hands and say, well, I'll request a refund or a discount or I'll send the book back? Do you uh, send a nasty letter to USPS or UPS or FedEx, however the book was sent, right? Uh, so that's kind of the question that I'm asking. And I, I have asked these questions to myself when I get a book from Midtown with this corner crunch, and I, like, what is my plan here? Now, the reason that I decided to try and press that book out was because the order that that book was in from Midtown, and I keep pointing to myself, uh, was from January of 2022. I just opened it in May of 2022. I don't like reaching out to places that I do business with and saying, hey, this book sat around in a box for four months and I just open it and there's some damage it, it's I, I don't feel it's honest I don't you know if it is a book that if it's an order that I just opened up and there are books in it with with damage and transit I feel like the timing of it makes sense I can photograph the books and I can send them off but in this case I looked at it and went I don't know what to do there were three books I think in the order that had corner crunch and it was strange to me that I had other books in the order that didn't. So I'm almost thinking that maybe these were returned items that got labeled as near mint. Because I don't really see how just a few of the books themselves could have slid around in transit and got damaged. But 
Anyway, uh, let me, let's get to the clips. Let me show you the process that I went through, how the book turned out. And then again, something to keep in mind as you're watching these is, is it worth it to learn how to do this, to figure it out? And is it something that you want to try on your own, uh, knowing how these sorts of books turn out? Take a look at the early damage that I show uh, of the Midtown special, and then uh, just the process I went through, the different tools I used, and then at the very end, I will go over how the book turned out. So here we go. Enjoy. Okay, here is the book. This is Star Wars number 13 from 2015. Um, I graded this book a 7.0 uh, with the indication that it could benefit from a press. Now, the reason I did that is because the book itself looks really good. Um, don't see really any other problems with the book other than that corner right there. Yep, that's it. That is the corner crunch. Uh, this book was received in the middle of an order from Midtown Comics and uh, was just severely impacted and crunched there. And the crunch and everything, it, it uh, went right through to the back. So a lot, just that rippling effect as if the book were dropped right there on that corner, front and back. And you'll notice too, this is where these questions come into play, is uh, there's some color breaks in there as well. So some of that's the light reflecting off the cover and some of it is color breaks. But the book overall, it's, you know, if you put your hand over that corner and kind of just looked at the rest of the book, it looks great. Um, just like what you would pay for, uh, what you would expect. No other issues here. A uh, little bit of waviness and, and wrinkling, I would say, just typical Marvel page wrinkling. Um, well, he's, yeah, the Wampa's scary. Um, there's Luke's lightsaber, everything is intact, but yeah, just, just some light color rubbing, some, some color breaking there in that corner. And then if you open the book to the center, you can just see it. Unfortunately, it just affects every page. Uh, staples are kind of high, but good positioning. Uh, so, you know, just have to take that into consideration once the book goes through pressing, but, uh, or I've always thought about like, can I get this out? Um, here's an even better look, uh, that... That discoloration right in the middle, it looks like the corner is either torn or something. That that's just that's just the ink on the book. It's a little bit of a light gray. So I saw that. I wanted to see if I could fix it. All right, so what I decided to do is blast this uh, specific corner with a bunch of humidity. Um, just didn't hold back, let it dry off, gave it a kind of a wipe down, and then took a piece of SRP paper and my tack iron and um, got kind of a, a low angle to this thing, but essentially you get the idea, and just started to press down. So it was the, the book was uh, cover side up, and so I, I was putting, you know, on the pressure scale, like one to 10, I was probably pushing down with maybe a four when I was right in the middle, uh, like right along the spine, and I figured it was okay if it, it flattened the book out a little bit because it was gonna be pressed anyway. But right there is probably around a four. And then as I moved uh, maybe up and down each side of the spine, I moved the pressure up uh, even greater, maybe a seven or eight. Uh, with this, you just kind of make a figure eight around each side, a little bit over the spine, and never really stopped for more than a second or two. And if I did, uh, there was one particular crease that looked to be quite stubborn. And I would hold the tack iron just over it for a little bit. Uh, and just kept checking to see if I was making any progress there. But uh, we just kind of rub in circles, figure eight style, and just kind of kept going over uh, this particular corner uh, in hopes to really give it that sort of hot shot targeted um, heat right there with the tack iron um, with that SRP paper um, covering the book to help protect it. Now, this is the book after I was done with the tack iron work. So this is before the press and just kind of wanted to show you what the book looked like uh, after the tack iron work. So here is the middle. Again, you can definitely see the creasing there uh, right in the middle. Um, the back looks, I think it already looks better, but what you can really tell there are the color breaks, a little bit of the color rubbing. Um, I didn't introduce that with the tack iron. It's just that's because of the impact, that, that corner crunch and the rippling effect, it will break color. You could see that light gray a little bit more closely there, but uh, and there's just a crease 
that I couldn't quite get out with the tack iron. Uh, it is a color breaking crease now. You know, it's maybe a quarter inch, uh, something like that, uh, that diagonal piece. But um, all in all, I think it does look better. And now to take the book out of the press, um, this was a standard, I would say quick press, uh, five minute variety. Um, I made sure I had the sandwich built properly with the additional 100 uh, pound cardstock in there to protect the digital stamp. So we take off the first magazine board, first sheet, and there it is. So I would say that regardless of any color breaks or any leftover color breaking issues, I guess, introduced by the crunch, if you look beyond that, this is very typical of what I would expect to see a book come out of the press like. Now, it did have a little bit of what I call the presser's crease up and down the spine. I'm still working on that. Uh, now, what I did here that was a little different, this has only been in the cold press for about an hour. Uh, you could see that the corner crunch is gone. It's just, it has that lingering uh, corner crease. And unfortunately, because it just broke color, there was nothing I could do about that. So now I'm going to put it under the cold press and then uh, leave it in there overnight. All right, so here is the book out of that overnight cold press. I uh, got a little bit of a before and after here. Um, again, you could see that line, the diagonal line, kind of making that corner into a triangle. Um, that's just a color break crease, unfortunately, but it's much, much more flat. Uh, here's the back uh, front and uh, before and after, left to right there. Uh, again, looks so much better. Um, there's some brightness on that after shot, but in the video you can kind of see there's some color breaks, but it's a flat book at this point. Um, the middle looks so much better. You don't see, I mean, it's just sort of a faint, <laughs> faint memory of, of that, that uh, crease there. Um, it looks, it just looks really flat, better. Um, a little bit of that presser's crease still, but I think that will eventually just sort of come out on its own. Um, uh, a nice looking book. Uh, what do you think? I mean, it looks really nice flat. Um, those wrinkles are gone. You wouldn't really know that there was an impact crunch. You you, st you still definitely see some remnants of, of damage, um, especially right there on the inside. You see some color breaks. It is not a 9.8. So this experiment, just so you know, was not to turn this book into a 9.8. It was to see just how much I could improve it. Uh, so there it is, the final product. So there you go. Uh, what did you think? Um, do you think the book improved? Uh, originally, I graded the book a 7.0 with the ability to press out that crease, but I gave it such a low grade because I noticed that the rippling effect of that crunch was causing other damage to the book, color breaks, and so forth. Uh, in particular, the middle of the book was, was really beat up. Um, it was just a really unfortunate defect, uh, uh, severely... Uh, impacted the book. So it was not an experiment to see if I could take a book with corner crunch and make it a 9.8. I would like to think that down the road, if I did see impact crunch that was not color breaking, uh, that I certainly could. Uh, I feel like the technique of using the tack iron was interesting. It was useful. I learned a lot from it. Um, making sure I have SRP paper and other things, just, you know, you have to just kind of practice and get the reps to go through it. Uh, but do you think the grade improved? And if so, what grade would you have uh, given that book after uh, the work done uh, to it? Um, I'll let you know what grade I gave it. Uh, but if you want to take a moment and think about it, uh, maybe leave a comment. I would love to get your feedback. I ended up giving the book an 8.5. And the reason that I did is just because, again, of those additional color-breaking lines and chips and... Uh, at some point, it did look like color rub as well. And then if you notice towards the end, when I opened up that back cover, there was even some color breaks on the inside. Now, that was the only damage to the book. The rest of the book was, I would say, pristine. If I were to cover it up, it would look like a 9.8. Uh, the waviness was all gone. Um, and even some of the, uh, what, I'm what I kept calling the presser's crease, it just sort of kind of drifted off, floated away. The paper just relaxed and it kind of went back to its normal state. So 
you know, when I kind of hyper zoomed in on that corner, if really that was the only defect or defective area that you're looking at, um, assuming the rest of the book is in, in a 9-8 candidate shape, what grade would you give the book? Um, I did almost give it a 9, but I just felt like that, I don't know, it's, it's one of those two where you, there's too much history now between myself and the book. You know, I worked on this book for a couple of days, and uh, because of the history and, you know, me being biased towards it, uh, I certainly would like it to be closer to a 9-8. Um, I paid pretty good money for the book, but um, I really think in all fairness, an 8-5 is, is probably okay. Uh, I'd love to send it into CGC just to see. I'm always curious to see what, what uh, grade a book is going to get, but it's <laughs> that's a rather uh, costly experiment. Let me know what you think. Did you like the process? Do you have any other advice for me, things that you would do differently? Let me know in the comments. Um, and, and when you leave comments, then other folks that watch the video, they can also see the feedback there to see if you agree or disagree with the process. Uh, if you have any other tips or tricks, uh, let's share them out and see to... Um, just help us all get better with uh, caring for our comic book collection. So there you go. Thank you for watching. Happy collecting and see you next time.